Welcome to another edition of Yes, We're Here. Meredith Morakovitz alongside one of the Yankees' greats, Tino Martinez. Tino, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Meredith, nice seeing you. Good seeing you. So what have you been doing as you've been self-quarantining during these crazy times? Well, you know, when it first started, when they first really shut down business in Tampa, I've been in Tampa the whole time, uh, it was tough. You know, we, we didn't leave our house for a while there, and then, then we were allowed to go out and walk around the neighborhood for exercise and that type of stuff. But uh, just trying to stay busy in the house and uh, – do puzzles, watch movies on TV, catch up on Netflix stuff, that kind of thing. Have you found yourself kind of trying to play the game? Okay, if the season starts on this date, they can probably get this many games in. I have. I, I've, I've gone through all the scenarios. I've read about all the scenarios about Arizona, possibly Florida, Texas, uh, starting July 4th, ending on Christmas Day. I've, I've read all those things. And, uh, you know, they all sound great, but I'm sure it's going to be hard to put together. And hopefully – something comes up. Hopefully this virus goes, really settles down to the point where they can start games, whether it be fans or not uh, is one thing, but just to get the season going, at least to get the fans um, something to watch on TV. What makes the most sense to you? We've heard a ton of scenarios. They're still trying to work through a lot of stuff. Jack Curry had Dr. Anthony Fauci on the other day, and he said the virus is probably going to dictate a lot of it. But as a former player, what do you think would be the most comfortable and safe for everyone involved? Well, I mean, if, if they play, it's, I mean, you know, that's all Dr. Fauci talked about. The hotels have to be quarantined, the workers there, uh, the players, you know, sitting in the stands during the game, that kind of thing. It's kind of weird, you know, but I think they'll do whatever it takes. And I think, um, I think a place like uh, uh, the Tropicana Field in St. Pete, uh, the Miami Marlins Stadium down there in Miami, Arizona, the ones with the, with the domes can really, you know, host a couple of games a day, um, you know, two or three games at a time and, and you know, maybe rotate teams somehow or another. But uh, I think anything indoors would help um, these, I mean, as far as weather goes and stuff, you don't have to worry about rain and uh, heat and that kind of stuff. And games will guarantee to be played. So if they can find something, even spring training sites. I mean, I just wanted to start playing again and really just get the virus taken care of. Cause I know so many people out there are suffering and have suffered. So many people out there are hoping that there is normalcy soon. And of course, first and foremost, we want everybody to be safe, be healthy, but there is a big part of them that is missing that escape in sports and that escape in baseball. But could you imagine playing baseball with no fans? What, what do you think that would have been like? It would be weird. I mean, you got this place like Yankee Stadium, you know, Fenway Park, all those places where the rabid fans are that as a home player, you look forward to playing there. And as a visiting team, you love going to play in those places. So it would take, take away a lot. It really would. It would seem very strange, uh, uh, almost like a, like, a, like a minor league spring training game in the backfields that are just, just, just to get your work in, where you see Jack Harlow Stanton hitting and Aaron Judge playing the game, uh, that kind of thing, where the atmosphere is very, very uh, – and not much there. And I know, especially when the season goes on, you're in there, 50 games, 60 games into it, the fans push you. You get a little tired and stuff, and having them there every day is, is a great motivation, and they really push you to play better. I still go, some baseball is better than no baseball, and it seems as though that's what everyone in the league is thinking right now. Um, as a former player, what would you see as some of the challenges in maybe getting ready a little bit quicker after having revved up for spring training, taking a break, and then having to go again? Yeah, I think this break has been about five weeks, I guess, now, roughly, maybe. Um, I think that's a long time. That's almost like they have to restart again. And I'm sure most guys are still working out somehow or another in gyms or running with treadmills and maybe hitting a cage at home. But um, and throwing, you see all the um, Instagram and see, you know, uh, Chapman and those guys throwing in their backyard and stuff, keeping their arms in shape. But they have to have a certain amount of time to get ready. I mean, the pitchers have to have build their arms up to take a little time to avoid injuries. And players, the, hitter, the hitters have to get their bats in to get the timing down. So I, I think they would do anything they have to do, though. If they say you got 15 days to get ready, they'll all go forward and figure out a way to do it. You mentioned Araldis Chapman. Would you ever want to do a workout with him? Never. I've watched him. It's unbelievable. I've seen his boxing. Uh, everything he does, it's incredible. That guy's a, a beast. But, um, you know, it's just fun, fun to follow. Unbelievable follow. Unbelievably athletic. Um, you know, as far as everything else is concerned, have you been checking in with some of your former teammates and some of your uh, former guys that you used to hang out with when you were at Yankee Stadium? Uh, yeah, you know, we, you know, we all you know, love watching the game. We're still involved with the Yankees, and, uh, and, and we, we talk all the time. I've, I've talked to Derek a couple of times, asked him what he knows, and he knows as much as everybody else. Just everything's in limbo. And, um, you know, everybody wants baseball. I mean, they want baseball. They want basketball. You know, they want, they want the teams to the golf on TV. You know, something to watch. That's what's been the hard part is um, 
uh, the fans missing out on all that. Again, let me reiterate, though, we, there's a lot going on out there that's more important. 100%. I don't want to forget about that. But as far as sports goes, I'm sure a lot of people would love to have sports back just to take their mind off of certain things for a little while. Hey, Tina, one thing I do know, you recently got a new neighbor. Have you brought over a basket of muffins to Tom Brady yet? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> I've thought about it, but I, I, you know, we talked a little earlier. Uh, uh, he moved into Derek's old house there, which is down the street from mine. And with all the kids being out of school and, and the adults that aren't at work and working out of the house, the neighborhood there, they're out there every day riding their bikes by his house just to get a peek at him. And uh, it's kind of funny because you'll see his, uh, somebody there taking the trash out for him and all that, so he doesn't have to deal with it. There are fans all outside his house every day, which is kind of annoying for him. But you know what? They're happy to have him in Tampa, as am I.